Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to look at the basics of measuring the ROI, the return on investment. So we're going to refer to that return on investment often as the ROI. And the idea is that this measurement tells you when you're looking at stocks, a percentage of what you're gaining or losing. So the formula we're going to follow here is we're going to look at the profit that you're making on your stock. So you take your profit, and that's going to be uh, distributed between both dividends, how much you're paid per share, and capital gains, how much the price changes on each share that you own. So the profit you make is it's a combination of capital gains, capital gains, and plus dividends, how much you're getting paid per share. All right, so then we take that profit, how much are you making, and you're dividing it out of how much you paid to get that profit, right? That was the purchase price of the stock. So the purchase price, the purchase price, plus any kind of commissions or maybe taxes or losses that are associated with that purchase. But we're just going to keep it here with purchase price and commission, and we're going to leave taxes and other fees out of it. That's not something that goes typically into this, although you could divide that out to really see how much you're profiting and how much you're losing. Uh, but we'll stick to these figures here. And what this will all come together to do is to calculate your return on investment, which I'm just going to drag down here. So this is what we talk about. This is what we're talking about when we mention return on investment. So let's imagine a scenario where you buy a bunch of stock, and when you when you buy the stock, so let's write this down under. I use black. So when you buy the stock, how much do you pay for it? Let's assume you pay, I don't know, $35 per share. $35 for every share that you buy, you spend $35. Okay, and then maybe the question becomes, well, how many of those shares are you, are you buying? How many? So let's assume that you're buying, let's keep it simple, 100 shares. So you're paying $35 per share, and you're buying 100 of them. So that's you're spending 35 times 100 in order to get the stock. And that's and this comes together for your purchase price. This is your purchase price. So purchase price, if we really think about what that is, um, it's a multiplication statement here where we take the price per share, the price per share, and then we multiply it by the number of shares. Number of shares. And that will just give you the um, total price that you've paid. And using the numbers here and the units, you would write $35 per share, the fraction per share, times 100 shares shares and you would see that the shares cancel out they divide to one and you're just left with do dollars here so that's thirty five hundred dollars all right like this thirty five hundred and that's the purchase price that's going to be this part of our equation right here with a color code that so we don't lose track of it now the commission um, that could work in all different kinds of ways let's look at our commission next Let's just say that you went to, when you went to buy this, you got some help, so you have to pay a brokerage fee, the person helping you buy the stock. So in order to buy the stock, you have to pay for the, the shares times the number of shares, your purchase price, plus, let's just say your commission was $19. So we'll call that the, the brokerage fee, brokerage fee. Let's say, let's say $20, make it simple, equals $20. Now, that I'm not saying that's a realistic price. I'm just keeping the numbers as simple as possible here. Now, what about profit? Let's look at the profit here. 
So it's, that's capital gains plus dividends. So let's write that down. So we have our profit. Your profit is going to be, again, made from your capital gains. So you, how much is the price rising, right? That is, that's your gain. So it's capital gain. If it's negative, it's a loss plus dividends. Okay, so in this case, we have to make some assumptions, right? What happened to the stock? So in this case, let's assume that the, the current stock value is no longer $35, what you paid for it. Let's assume it's gone up. So what do I note that the current stock price equals, we were at 35, let's have it go up to 40. Nice big increase there. So it's gone up to $40 per share. So from 35 to 40, and let's also assume that your dividends, usually figured out by the board, how much they're gonna to pay to their stockholders. Let's assume it is $3 per share. $3 per share. Remember this line right here, that means per, so it's per share and $3 per share is your dividend. So to find the capital gain, we want to say, well, how much did the stock go up, right? Well, it's your profit here is $40 per share minus $35 per share per share. And that's a five dollar. It's a five dollar gain, and but that's that's per share, and you own a hundred of them, so that's going to be times one hundred shares. And the way the units are going to cancel out here, you could have dollars per share times shares. The shares cancel out, and this is going to be a dollar measurement. Plus your dividends is again. This is three dollars per share, so it's going to be three dollars per share times, that says share, times 100 shares, because you're making that money on top of it. That says shares as well, sorry, a little sloppy there. The shares are going to cancel, and you're going to have $5 times 100, it's $500. $500, that's your, from your capital gain, right here, plus $3 per share, which is 300, because it's three times 100 is 300. So your profit is $800. So that's really nice, right? You've made some money. But often we want to express that as a percentage so you can compare stocks because um, your, your raw profit is going to be based upon how many shares you were able to buy. So someone who can't afford 100 shares would still want to know, well, how much can I make as a percentage of what, I am, of what I'm paying out? As a percentage of. So how do we do that? We take the profit, that $800, and we divide it by the combination of purchase price and commission. That's going to give us a decimal, and we can then multiply it by 100 to write it as a percent. So let's do that. So now we put this all together. We have our profit. That is $800. And we divide it by the expenses, which is $3,500 plus that brokerage fee of $20. Multiply that by 100 and we will have our return on commission on our investment as a percent. So let's just do that real quick. So our profit is $800. And we divide that by the 3500 plus the $20 at a brokerage fee times 100 and that's our return. So let's take a look at that. There 800 divided by parentheses don't forget those parentheses, 3500 and and $20. That's our percentage as a decimal times 100, and that's 22.73%. You could also just go to math over to number, down to round, choice 2. I'll press up, hit enter, and if I tell it to round to the nearest hundredth, I want to enter comma and then two because the nearest hundredth right here is one, two decimal places. Close my parentheses and I'll have that answer right there. That's my final return on investment. 
All right, thanks.